My name is Kid Ace, and we are here with another episode of No Skates, No Problem. I am really excited for today's episode because I have a special guest here to talk about injuries, injury prevention, as well as what we can learn from bails and fails. Cooley, I just want to give you a little background. This show is for roller skaters who are either waiting for their roller skates or who are looking for off skates information, tips and tricks to help support the roller skating. Um, so this season, we are thinking about injuries, how we can learn from bails and fails and how we can prevent injury. Um, so I am going to start by asking you, Cooley, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, about how long you've been skating and what you love to skate? Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and talk about it because this is um, a really good subject for me. It's relative. Uh, my name is Carly Craig on Instagram. I am Roller Ghoulie. Uh, a lot of my friends call me Ghoulie. I've been roller skating since 2013 and I mostly focus on street skating. So like ledges, rails, skeps, things like that. Um, that's me. <laughs> that's great. So I definitely picked Ghoulie for this interview because she has created bail videos for the last two years, which I think it's going to be really informational for us to kind of talk about with her. But Ghoulie, I have a few more questions about your history with skating. Can you tell us a little bit about why you started skating and what it is about street skating that drew you in? Sure. Um, so to not like ramble too much about it when I was growing up I always uh, hung out with skateboarders but I could not skateboard for the life of me so one day I was at sports authority and I found a cheap pair of roller skates and I was like oh my god I should just do that <laughs> but of course they made fun of me because a bunch of dudes on skateboards and they're like what are you doing you can't do that <laughs> so I gave up on it um, and then about a couple of years later I found out about roller derby so I quickly joined a team because I was really intrigued by it um, pretty much simultaneously, I started skate park skating with my derby skates, uh, with skateboarders again. So I was just trying to learn and figure that out on my own. Um, and I think that's kind of where my street skating comes in because I grew up like watching my friends film videos and we would always like be in our friends' basements and be watching street parts that came out. And they're always talking about the teams and their street sections. And I really liked that lifestyle. And I was so jealous that I couldn't actually be like in that. I was just kind of like the outsider looking in. So once I started skating, it was pretty much right away. I wanted to focus on street skating. And I would say probably within months, my goal was to come out with a street part for either myself or to have a team to do that. I'm super grateful that I did get to do that. Um, so that's kind of what still pushes me in my skating is making videos and watching my friends and I progress in street because it's still very new to roller skating. Um, it doesn't have a long history in street skating like inlining and skateboarding does. So it's really fun to watch it grow and progress over time. Nice. So we have a lot of beginners that tune into this show. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what it was like to be a beginning roller skater and kind of if there was any challenges or what were the first things that you learned as a beginner? Um, so I was terrible at skating. I had no background in skating before. I think I went to like two parties as a kid at the roller rink, but I had no background in it at all. Um, so it was just a mess. I was falling all over the place. I didn't know how to stop. So I would just run into inanimate objects for like two years, by the way. <laughs> so in roller derby, I would just be like full speed flying into the wall or a person. Um, so yeah, it was really challenging because it was embarrassing for me. Um, I, I think growing up around like groups of men, there's this feeling of like, you can't be vulnerable or like show that things are difficult sometimes. So at first I was really embarrassed on how hard it was. Like skating is not easy. It takes a lot of practice and diligence and getting back up. So that was really challenging at first. 
um, just because in my own mind, I was like, this is embarrassing. <laughs> but I didn't realize back then that there were so many people all over the world that were exact in the same place that I was in. Um, and we're all learning together without me realizing it. So that was, I guess, my biggest hurdle um, stopping was like the bane of my roller derby existence for a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess really everything comes down to muscle memory. And I started to figure that out. And I just would repeat movements over and over again until it was like second nature and I didn't have to think about it anymore. But yeah, just getting used to falling and getting back up and not being embarrassed about it and keep doing it was really challenging, but it's worth it. Yeah, so totally. And that that makes me think in the last episode, I suggested to brand new skaters that something they might want to focus on as they are building strength or starting to learn roller skating is to learn how to fall and learn how to get up. When you were a beginner roller skater, did you like learn how to fall in a particular way or did you just kind of fall and have to go through it? A little of both. <laughs> um, in derby culture, it's okay. Like It's more acceptable to fall on your knees because we have full padding all the time. So I was taught how to fall on my knees, uh, but a lot of the time I was just kind of splaying out and hoping for the best. But we did learn like a series of falls and kind of how to move your body in certain uh, positions to avoid injury. Um, and as a, I remember back then as a beginner, we had a whole group of beginners and that was what we would drill every single practice before we would start interacting with others. Um, because it is really important if you don't have, if you're not used to like balance on roller skates and then you tip too far backwards or you tip too far forward, things can go wrong. So if you don't have that muscle memory of like it just clicking when you're about to fall, um, then it, it can get a little scary and dangerous and sometimes it can discourage you from trying again. So it is always a good idea to kind of drill those uh, thoughts and ideas and movements. Nice. So when you were learning how to fall and learning how to roller skate, was there anything that you were doing off skates to support or supplement your roller skating? Uh, I did. That was like the first time in my life that I started working out. <laughs> Um, because I was really passionate about it. So I wanted to target muscle groups that I knew were going to really help my skating. So like my hip flexors were really weak. Um, I remember my ex-boyfriend telling me to flex my quads and he was like, no, flex them. And I was like, I am. <laughs> um, so I just really lacked muscle, like not even definition, but just uh, engagement. I didn't really know what muscles to engage for what. Um, so I started kind of doing research on how to engage muscles and what which ones were uh, most relevant for like ice skaters and hockey skaters, because back then it, there wasn't a whole lot of information out there about roller skating yet. Um, so, yeah, I just started focusing on those things. And I will say it helped a lot because your hip flexors and your glutes and your quads and your hamstrings, uh, they work so hard for skating. So <laughs> I definitely recommend focusing on those muscle groups. Yeah, that is like tip top awesome advice. Um, so when you were working out and supplementing your learning how to roller skate and getting stronger, were you going to the gym and doing resistance work or was there another sport that you kind of got involved in to do that? I mostly started out at home because again, I was embarrassed <laughs> to be new at the gym kind of thing. Um, I did do like cross training stuff when I was in high school for a sport, but nothing on my own where I was like creating my own um, practice instead of having a coach being like, this is what you do, do 20 reps of that, <laughs> you know. Um, so I started at home just watching YouTube videos. Uh, I got into like Pilates and yoga, which you're great at. So I highly recommend checking out more of your videos for that because it can get really overwhelming when you're looking online. Um, but yeah, eventually I got to the gym and I started focusing on actual weightlifting and just uh, figuring out muscle engagements and how to separate muscle groups because weightlifting is really good at getting you to fire the right muscles instead of using equipment where things kind of all happen at once, if that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, weightlifting is kind of the direction I went with that. Right on. So as you've progressed as a skater and 
and you've moved on from roller derby and now you're doing more street skating, are you still involved in off skates training either for strengthening and maintenance or for recovery or anything? Yeah, so physical therapy, unfortunately and fortunately, has been a big part of my career uh, in roller skating, and I just seem to constantly be in it. So I always have physical therapy going on in in some form. Um, I was doing weightlifting pretty consistently up until quarantine started happening, (laughs) Um, but then I started doing stuff at home. I definitely kind of lost track of my routine as I'm sure most of us have, because it is challenging to be self-motivating at home when you don't have equipment. Um, But I was street skating a lot over the summer and I was always sore and my body always kind of felt beat up. So I was giving myself some, uh, I guess, excuses for putting it on the back burner. But now that it's uh, turning winter here, because I live in the suburbs of Chicago, um, I am starting to focus more on my off skate stuff again, because when I'm not um, skating like five times a week or three to five times a week, I need to not let my body have too much of a break because when I get back into it, it's going to not be happy with me. So uh, right now I've been focusing on Pilates. And when I feel like I'm in a good place there, I'm going to go back to weightlifting. Right on. Uh, I totally hear you about the kind of shift that has to happen in the winter. Um, I'm in Washington and it's raining right now and it's going to probably rain for the next like five months. So, um, yeah, it's really good to hear that you're in this boat as well. Cause my off skates is definitely increased as the rain came. Um, so, but, uh, speaking of physical therapy and your injuries, um, can you tell us a little bit about some of the injuries you've had and kind of how they came up? And um, if there's anything in addition to the physical therapy that you did to treat yourself. The first injury I had was I dislocated my right shoulder. Probably the most painful still to date. (laughs) Um, That one was just, I was doing a 360 on a ramp and I landed on like the flat, like farther down on the ramp than than I was supposed to. So my feet went out from underneath me while my arm was above my head. So my full weight came down on that shoulder. Um, So that one was a lot of physical therapy. I had a torn labrum and a fractured humeral head, but I opted to not do surgery because the surgery would have been off skates for over a year and I was not willing to do that. (laughs) So um, we, luckily I had a really awesome um, orthopedic surgeon and he was willing to just push me with hardcore physical therapy so we could avoid um, surgery as much as possible or as long as possible. Um, So yeah, that was my first experience with physical therapy and it was challenging, (laughs) but I'm glad that I got that experience because it helped me get in tune with my body and then prepped me for future injuries. Um, Then I had a torn ligament in my left wrist that I had surgery on just because it would have flare ups all the time. And I tend to fall on my hands a lot. Um, I find in street skating, I fall more on my hands than I do my knees. So if you see me wearing wrist guards over knee pads, that is why. Um, so just repetitive impact. I It was just like an overtime thing. I ended up having ligament damage. So it wasn't, it wasn't like one instance. It was just overtime, which can happen if you're doing heavy impact on a joint over and over again without uh, any kind of strengthening or prehab stuff. And then the next one... <laughs> I broke my right arm. Uh, That was somewhat recently. So I had a ton of physical therapy for that one and surgery. And then I um, (laughs) I had a slight tear in my psoas muscle. So I had some low back issues. That was really tough because it wasn't like the other injuries where it was really localized. It was kind of like a general, general area where everything was getting affected because it was compensating. So I had to do a lot of dynamic physical therapy and chiropractor and um, Pilates helped a lot because it's more about like trying to stabilize joints and fire um, muscle groups without like being overbearing with them when they're in recovery. So that was um, one of the most informative injuries I've had because I had to learn so much about different muscle groups and how they all play in with each other. And then the most recent one was I have a level or a grade two ankle sprain. This happened last week. 
<laughs> and I'm oh. now in physical therapy for that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, what is it? It's 2020. Okay, seven years skating and what's that's about so shoulder wrist so as arm arm ankle five. Oh, and I have, <laughs> I have cartilage damage in my right knee but I can't blame roller skating for that because I've had issues with it even prior but it's getting worse now so <laughs> but yeah wow. I'd say about five injuries in the last seven years I don't have I will say I don't have the best luck I wouldn't say this is like typical because I don't even want to be scared be like what the heck <laughs> um because everyone's bodies are different like I have hypermobile joints so they tend to um like just get over injured from impact and overuse and things whereas some people are just built differently they're built stronger uh, I find every person's body is entirely different than the next person's and they heal different they react different so some of us just don't have the greatest luck when it comes to injuries but so I think it's important to just trust in the process and not get too hard on yourself because injuries do happen, unfortunately. But if we let them control uh, the things that we want to do, like if you love to skate and you want to keep doing that, then you have to just keep getting back up and do the work to get healthy again. Yeah. So that I think that's awesome information for skaters. Um as far as the mental piece of being injured, you address that a little bit, which is, to, you know, you have to keep getting back up and keep going. Um, something that I've heard some beginning skaters mention is like, if they do have a big fall, they're really scared to do the trick that brought them to that. Um, do you have anything to say as far as that's concerned and like kind of overcoming those mental obstacles? Yeah, I would say mental obstacles are huge. Most of the time, mental obstacles will outweigh a physical obstacle that we may have. Um, for me personally, I always have a really hard time getting past the mental obstacles right after an injury. I tend to victimize myself and I'm really upset about it. I'm like, why me? <laughs> um, but then when I finally get back on skates, I almost feel like refreshed to start over. It's not like starting totally over, of course, but you have to kind of build back up in baby steps. So whenever I come back from an injury, I'm not going to go back 100% like where I was. And instead of being discouraged with that, it's an opportunity to kind of perfect some basic skills that help build back up to where you were before. So let's say, for example, you dislocated your shoulder doing a 360. <laughs> Instead of being afraid of 360s for the rest of your skating career, um, start back with some of the basics. Start doing the things that you learned before the 360 and, and, and feel really solid in those movements before you get back up there. And usually, at least for me, when I start to perfect some of those more basic skills before the tricks that I was doing before, um, I usually find that I am so much better at the, the goal that I was trying to get to. I'm much better at it and it comes to me quicker and I feel safer and stronger in those areas. Whereas before they were kind of sloppy or like, that's why I got hurt. Um, so yeah, the mental block is a huge challenge, but I think it is worth it when you can surpass it because you feel stronger and you feel more in touch with yourself because you kind of have, an idea of what it feels like to push through those barriers. And then it's like uh, rewarding because then you feel like you've accomplished something that you're afraid of because fear is extremely powerful. So if you can kind of conquer a fear, it feels more satisfying than something in like the physical realm, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that is some expert advice as far as getting over mental blocks, like taking a step back, reminding yourself what you can do, getting strong enough to come back to the things that you were doing. I think that's really important advice. So yeah, thanks for that. I wanted to ask what kinds of things have you learned from being injured aside from the benefits of physical therapy, um, as well as this advice you just gave us about coming back in baby steps, what other things have, have injuries taught you in your skating journey? 
they're definitely humbling. <laughs> oh, I will say that. But also it gives you time to kind of breathe and focus your energy on what it is that you want to accomplish. So times when I'm injured, I tend to watch a lot of skating videos. I write a lot of things down, uh, goals that I have, tricks I want to do, projects I want to work on, because I, I often feel that when I'm in the heart of working on a skate project or, you know, the busy life and all the physical activities I do, I don't have time to kind of just reflect on things um, and plan things out. So I usually try to take that opportunity to focus my mental energy on something a little bit different um, and just plan things out a bit more. And it gives you the opportunity to visualize things because if you visualize it, then the, the chance that things can come to reality are greater than if you're just winging it <laughs> and open for the best. But if you can actually visualize and plan things, they kind of run a little bit smoother. Um, so that's what I like to focus on. And then it keeps my spirits up and I'm still kind of involved in skating in a different way, but more strategizing than just going out there and skating. Totally. I think this is like gooey gold right here. And this is a lot of what this uh, show is about, which is that just because you can't put your skates on for whatever reason, um, if you have that roller skate heart, uh, there are so many ways to stay involved and stay excited about it. Like Willie said, you watch your videos, you can journal, you can make goals, um, you can visualize. That is, this is some awesome advice. Thank you so much, Gooley, for, for, for that. I think that's awesome. I wanted to shift gears a little bit and talk about your um, yearly annual bail uh, compilation project that you do, uh, which I love. Um, and I feel really blessed that I got a little moment in your, um, tw I think your 2018 one. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about what that project's about, uh, why you made it, and um, what you what you get out of it? <laughs> uh, I love bails and fails. <laughs> as long as the person is actually okay, they're so entertaining. Uh, I I find that when I'm like Instagram scrolling or whatever, those videos make me laugh every time. And it's not because it's funny watching someone get hurt, but it's just funny to see that we are all the same. Like we're all human. We all make mistakes sometimes. Even when you think that someone is the best skater out there and you watch a video of them falling or failing, it kind of gives you a little bit of encouragement that we all start somewhere and we all have building blocks that we work on. And even if it's something that you are really good at doing. If you have like one trick, that's like your trick, we all mess up on it still. <laughs> so it happens. Um, so yeah, I just love fall videos. I think they're hilarious and entertaining. So the first one I did, um, it was the roller skating community was a lot smaller then. So it was more of a collective kind of project. I reached out to a lot of different skaters and I was like, send me your bales, email them to me. I'm going to put them all together. Um, so that was really fun because it was more interactive and I got to add videos in that people wanted to be put in the videos so that others would see. And I also added fun little memes and snippets to make it more entertaining. Um, and I got inspired from these, uh, it's a snowboard group of girls who have done some fail videos in the past of just their little group. And that inspired me because I was like, these girls are kick-ass. <laughs> and I want to show that what we're doing is also kick-ass and that falls happen and we get back up and we're shredding on concrete and, you know, wiping our skin and all over the place. <laughs> so um, the second one, the project started to get a little bit bigger and I started just saving videos from Instagram. As soon as I would see a good fall, I would just save it. And then I had this big monster collection of fail videos over the whole year that took me forever to sort through and kind of make um, a video that wasn't 20 minutes long because there are so many golden falls out there. <laughs> and then this last one, I did the same thing. Um, but this upcoming one will probably be in a similar fashion, but um, I'm trying to make sure people that want to be involved are involved. And if people don't want their video out there, then I won't put it out there. Cause I have had people in the past um, get the misconception that I was trying to like make fun of us or have people laugh at like our failures, but it's not about that. It's just about um, kind of like 
laughing at our own selves, you know, like seeing if I watch a video of myself falling, it makes me laugh because sometimes it's just silly. The things that we do or the mistakes that we make or the little trip ups that we have. So it's uh, refreshing sometimes to just laugh at ourselves and not take skating so seriously and to know that it is still all in good fun. And no matter what skill level you're at, we all still do it. And it's not embarrassing like I thought for a long time. <laughs> and it's something that we could be proud of and know like I just took this monster slam, but I still got back up. So that's what the videos are all about. I love that. That's totally real. Like, I think the having a sense of humor about this roller skating is huge. Um, that's definitely what keeps me coming back. It's like so fun. Um, the successes and the failures. <laughs> so we cannot have an interview with Roller Goalie without asking about your circus experience and that side of your life. Can you tell us a little bit about that and your involvement in the circus? Yeah, um, I started circus a few years ago. I used to be a cheerleader growing up. I usually don't tell people that, but um, I really liked the sport and I missed kind of like the acrobatics of it. So when someone introduced me to circus, I thought this is perfect. I love clowns. <laughs> so um, I started doing something called perch pull and aerial straps and partner, partner acrobatics and um, basically skating, I would say, gave me a sense of fearlessness in circus. Uh, there's not much in circus that I'm afraid of. I'm usually the one that's like, I'll, whatever, I'll try it. <laughs> because I feel like um, it's kind of a safer contained environment than throwing your body around at the skate park or on the street. So um, it's helped me a lot in that avenue. And it's also circus has helped me in skating because there's a ton of balance. Oh, I also do um, high wire. So there's a lot of balance involved. Um, you just start to kind of build muscle memory with different types of actions that you don't normally do. So you just kind of feel like an overall stronger, conf more co confident person when you're trying all these different weird apparatuses. Um, so I think at least mentally, it's helped me a lot kind of overcome fears and setbacks that I've had by doing both of them kind of simultaneously. So I am grateful for both of these sports for aiding in the other. That is awesome. So, so I'm like kind of making a mental tally of these things that inform your roller skating, which is quite a bit like you have this history of athleticism and cheerleading. And then you started doing this resistance working, uh, resistance work, sorry, during roller derby. And now you're kind of doing this PT and you're also doing this circus work. So um, it's really awesome to hear, you know, roller skater who is at like at the level that you're at doing so much outside to inform this sport. Um, and I think that's, again, what this show is all about is that, uh, roller skating is not just roller skating. It's like this awesome blend of lots of things. So Ghoulie, for our beginners out there, for all those soon to be roller skaters out there, what is uh, for you the most important thing that you want to say to them? I would say, don't be too hard on yourself. I think that we are all our worst critic and enemy in most aspects of the world and daily living. Um, but in my experience, I am so harsh with myself and my skating. And when I expect myself to be able to do something that I can't do, I can get really frustrated with myself and have this negative self-talk, but it's not useful or productive and it's only harming me further. <laughs> so I know that it is challenging when you're first starting out learning some basics and you see people on the internet that look like they have it all together and they're set with skating. Um, it's only perceived that way on the internet because inevitably that's what happens. But that person had to start somewhere and they had to build up just like you're going to build up. And you have to be patient with yourself and trust that things will come over time with practice and don't feel embarrassed to fall or don't be, don't feel embarrassed if you don't look that awesome <laughs> when you're doing something if you look lan lanky and like a weird praying mantis like I do when I learn something new um, don't kind of 
take that as a negative thing, but more as a positive thing that this is where you're at now. And you look how much farther that you can go. And when you get to that, that space, you're going to look back and be super grateful of the progress that you've made, but you're not going to get there if you're just discouraging yourself with negative self-talk and being really hard on yourself. That's hands down the most difficult part for me in skating is just staying positive and giving myself a pat on the back sometimes and letting myself make mistakes and fail at something that I think I should be good at um, because we're human and we're not machines that are going to do everything perfectly. So you just got to be kind to yourself and enjoy the journey while you get to whatever goal that you've made for yourself. That's awesome. That's such good advice. Um, So for all of you out there who are in waiting and or in the rain and cannot roller skate, I would highly encourage you to check out Ghoulie's edit, which is called Street Fighters. And Ghoulie, can you tell us a little bit about that project as well as if you have any upcoming projects? Street Fighters is, as far as I know, the first full length roller skate edit of street skating only. Um, So I wanted to put together a group of friends that mostly focused on street skating um, because there's all sorts of avenues of skating and street skating is a little bit underground still. It's growing in popularity, which is awesome. But at the time I was like, I want to get these people together and I want us to put out a video of what we can do. So um, me and four friends put together individual parts. So we we each filmed a section of street skating and then we had uh, a pretty hefty number of um, friends throw in some clips, including Ace. Check it out because she's got a really good clip in there. Um, So it was just kind of a collective of a lot of different skaters all over the world, many different countries that put in their best effort for some street skating clips and we put it all together for a video. We premiered it at multiple locations and now it is for free on YouTube. So if you have time to check it out, please do, because it has a lot of really fun, um, unique style of skating and also quite a bit of fails if you're into fails too. (laughs) Oh, and future project. Um, There will be a Street Fighters 2, but we did have to postpone it because of the current state of the world. But eventually we will get back to working on Street Fighters 2. In the meantime, I've been working on my own individual part. So I will be putting that out uh, in the next couple months. Um, But it's just going to be me. But eventually we will get another collective video out there of a bunch of people because those are my favorite. I love to see all different people come together and see all the different style of skating and how each person skates so differently. And we all have different skills. So I'm excited to start working on that one. That's awesome. So we will definitely include the link to Street Fighters as well as the links to the 2018, 20, or yeah, 2018-2019 Bales uh, videos that Willie's put out to keep you motivated, to keep you excited, and to keep you inspired as you are waiting for your skates to arrive. So Guli, thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Um, Usually I take people outside in my yard and show them some exercises, but it's really rainy. So so we're doing this, which is super fun. (laughs) (laughs) So thank you so much. Um, And thank you for having me and for listening to me ramble. (laughs) It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of No Skates, No Problem. This was truly one of my favorite episodes to create. It was so fun talking to Roller Ghoulie. If you'd like to check out her bail videos as well as Street Fighters, make sure you check it out in the description below. We've got all the links in there. Before we head out, I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who has left such kind comments on this series. I'm so glad that this series is helping you stay enthusiastic about roller skating as you might be waiting for your roller skates. I'm also really happy that this series is providing you with some off skates ideas for how to support your skating. So I wanted to make some specific shout outs uh, to some people who left some awesome comments on my last video. Roxanne Blackman said that they got a shiatsu massager, which is 
awesome. Recovery is so important for athletes and this shiatsu massager sounds awesome. I also wanted to give a shout out to Keith Amos who said they've got a yoga wheel to help them with their off skates training and they've seen an improvement in their skating. So that's awesome. I also wanted to say shout out to It's Archie. I am sorry that you took a big fall, but it's good you're taking care of yourself and you'll be out, back out there skating in no time. And then finally, shout out to the mother 444 Wilson with an awesome piece of advice to wear knee pads. If you can avoid falling on your tailbone, they said, and instead wear knee pads so you can fall on your knees, then yeah, it's gonna make a huge difference. So as this season goes on, we'll definitely have more tips, tricks, and information about how to fall and what you can do to mitigate injury uh, as a roller skater. So thank you to everyone. Keep leaving comments. Keep letting me know what you're doing off skates. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you next time.